Hello, hello, hello. Um, those of you that joined on YouTube Live, thank you very much, wherever you are. I'm just going to start to broadcast this webinar, give it a couple of minutes for people to join. We've got a lot of people who want to attend this one, so I will broadcast now. Hello and welcome, wherever you are, whoever you are. We're just going to give it a couple of minutes. Um, there's a few people that do want to join um, that are running a couple of minutes. It's filling up quickly the room, so we'll give it till sort of two minutes past ten. Um, wherever you are, I hope you're safe. I hope you're prepared and excited for this lovely webinar we're about to deliver. Today we're going to deliver this on Hike Central version 1.6. It had an update quite recently, um, some new fe features and functions, but just a general walkthrough of the uh, software, what it can do, show you how powerful it can be when deployed correctly. Um, really, really powerful software. I'm just going to give it another sort of 60 seconds. For those of you that normally watch, uh, I normally do have a sidekick, Reese. He's actually um, doing tech calls again today, so I am on my own. Any questions you may have around today, so if you need more information or if you feel that nothing has been answered and you need some more clarity or just some you know, further chat about the software VMS or if it's a suggestion of a webinar, use webinar at dvs.co.uk and we will endeavour to help you the best way we can. So that's webinar at dvs.co.uk or speak to your DVS sales rep. Um, if you want to open an account with us, get in contact with us and we'll put you in touch with someone. Or if you are a customer of ours, then please speak to your sales rep. They can help gather some information for you. Okay, so I think we're pretty much okay with the room is sort of filling up nicely. Okay, so those of you that joined on YouTube live, really, really appreciate it. We find that that's another great platform to watch it on. So wherever you are in the world, I really, really appreciate the support and you've taken your valuable time to go through the Hike Central 1.6. So Hike Central um, is a client server architecture. We actually sell a dedicated server. Um, you don't have to use our server. We suggest that you use the Hike Vision server, uh, but you don't have to. The added advantage is you get three years SUP, so software update support. Um, if you use your own server, so if you use a VMware or Hyper-V terminal that's in an existing IT setup, then you can still use that. That's fine. There's no um, license costs additionally to that, but you'll only get two years SUP. So uh, it makes sense to use ours to get the additional uh, one year, but you can, you can buy additional SUP support uh, should you require. Okay, so the license is, it's a license-based uh, system, and it is a modular system so you can don't have to purchase it fully up front you can actually do this as a phased approach which is a really nice thing to do um you have to have certain licenses to do certain things which we'll get into quite shortly um but it is a server client architecture so the way this works is the client um is what you deploy on the the end users uh, uh, sort of pc workstations uh, there is also an app for the smart device so apple and android both have the Hike Central uh, app, which you can use. Um, the way this would work is the end user would use the client, um, the admin configuration system setup, and some data input in is done through the web client. So it's a sort of two stage approach. So you've actually web browse or seeing me web browsing into my Hike Central server. So we'll go through the server side setup first, um, general overview on that and then we'll get into the client side. So we'll try to aim this for about 60 minutes. It might run over. Like I said, if you've got any questions, please ask. We hope to give you an overview. You could spend three days on a training course doing this. The advanced one is sort of three days. Um, so you can imagine within sort of 60 minutes, I've got to try and condense this to get through to sort of tell you the best features, functions, and what we can do. So we're going to crack on. So first of all, we'll web browse into my server. Done. So if you've used Hike Central before or the Hike, uh, any of the Hike Vision product, you'll see it's made in a way that's quite intuitive. It's easy to follow. Um, we have uh, web client uh, and user manuals and tutorials built in. So if you need any help, you can actually get that within the web client directly. Um, but again, we, we'll try to go through as much as we can. Again, ask us or Hike Vision pass this if you can't get the information you want. 
It is a license-based system. And what you'll see here is this tells me when my license expires. So it's an indefinite license. Our licensing module mo model is you buy the license and then it's there indefinitely. It's not tied to a Mac address of a camera or anything. So as long as you, if you have 64 channels uh, license, you can put 64 cameras against that and you can chop and change as required. The only thing, the license itself is actually tied to the server. So if you have to change the server for any reason, then you need to contact us or Hike Vision Technical, and they can unbind the license to allow you to apply that back to a new server if you had to migrate it or if the server failed, broke, and you had to replace it, etc. So that's why we bind the license. But the actual video licensing isn't tied anywhere. You'll see within the video licensing section, it gives you a breakdown of what your license includes. So I've got 258 channel license, 69 are currently in use, access points, um, floor alarm inputs from security alarm panels, radars, we now support radar units. So our height vision radar unit in version 1.6 is supported through a license module. And um, the UVSS, again, the UVSS is the under vehicle security system. So it's a camera and scanning system. Again, that's supported. That was supported before 1.6. You've got remote sites, indoor stations. So now on version 1.6, we now actually support entrance and exit control. So AMPR entrance and exit. So for those of you that use the old IVMS 5200 parking solution, that's now migrated into version 1.6, which I'll show you shortly. Really, really powerful. And there's always work on going on this. So they're always releasing updates, new features, add into it, et cetera. So it's really important you keep up to date with these as well. Um, so the intercom systems, that's what the word I was trying to get out. The intercom is now supported in version 1.6. So you can actually integrate the indoor stations and uh, outdoor call stations within um, version 1.6. Again, licensed, but really, really powerful. Our access control product, that can be integrated into it with a, um, a module license. We've got the facial recognition. So our facial recognition system, whether it's the camera or the NVR that we do, that can be migrated into the system. And you can see uh, we have the deep in mind servers for like people analysis, uh, traffic solutions, uh, all sorts. We can do the IPSAN units of so recording servers, IPSAN, uh, the CVS cloud storage solutions. It can all be integrated into one product set. Uh, so it becomes very, very powerful. Security order service, high connect, smart wall. So the smart wall is a license. Once you buy the license, it unlocks it. So it allows you to use the decoder product. So a decoder for a video wall. So again, really powerful. We do two versions, the decoding device, the hardware decoding and a graphic card. So if you've got a PC with a uh, accelerated GPU, for instance, you can choose the graphic card and it simulates a decoder but inside the PC. Um, it depends on what you're trying to do. Some people prefer the video wall, but you can use it within the PC environment if you've got a graphics card that's powerful enough. And GIS mapping, we support GIS mapping. Most people will import a uh, like a JPEG bitmap um, and drag and drop cameras onto it. You can use GIS mapping. It was really powerful when we first released a Hike Central version one back in the day. Uh, Google have since charged for that. So if you do use GIS mapping, you need to go and set up a credit card against the API key that you will receive that you input into our system. And again, it allows so many free clicks and over that you get charged to your personal credit card or the customer's personal credit card. So you can use GIS mapping, but it is a chargeable feature. And we've got alarms, attendance, visitor mode. So uh, time and attendance is now supported in this. We've got a visitor module, so visitor attendance, uh, video intercoms, entrance and exits, evidence collection. So we can use the um, S, SF, SF, not SFP, um, uh, SFTP server to use an evidence collection. So you can actually uh, tag video footage um, and put some details against it and it gets saved in the server that's on the site. Visual tracking, people counting, queue analysis, heat analysis, pathway analysis, person feature analysis, health monitoring and server distribution, third party integration, software update program. So you can see there's a vast amount of things that can be enabled if you want them. We have a full list of the modules that if you need to know the full list of the modules, please let us know and we can pass that out what each module does and, and sort of how to deploy that. One thing with this uh, system is when we first released it, if you had a facial recognition camera, for instance, you had to double license it. So you needed the facial recognition module 
plus a video license to use this. Now, certain things, so facial recognition and AMPR, you only, if you're only using it for AMPR, you actually only need to buy the entrance and exit um, module, which will give you two AMPR cameras and yet entry and exit features, which I'll show you. And then any additional AMPR license, if you go above two cameras, you don't need the standard video licensing to also back that up. So it becomes a little bit more cost effective. Um, you weren't double licensing some products. Again, there's your license list there. So you click on each one and it'll just give you the details that's applicable for each of those licenses. So some of these are test licenses, so it enables me to test certain features before I purchase them and, and uh, support them. It's very simple. Once you get your server and put it online, so if you buy the server with the licenses already, that will be already uh, implanted in the server. And all you need to do is turn it on, log into Windows, open up the web client, input the password, because there's no password by default, you have to set your password like our other um, backend products. And then if you want to add any licenses, it's as simple as this, online update, type in the license code there and click update. Any of you that have got version 1.5 or below, and then you buy a license now, the license code mechanism has changed. So you will have to update from version whatever to version 1.6 and continue above that because the license code method has changed. Now to upgrade from an uh, older version to 1.6, we have to do a license patch and then update it. So it doesn't lose any data, but there is a set procedure in this. So again, speak to us or Hike Vision and we can explain and send the relevant documentation to allow you to update to the version 1.6, which will allow you to continue to license your product for additional functions and features. But the license code went from sort of 16 digits up to 24. So it is a different license code module. But the online activation will simply allow you to do that. If you're on a closed network and you can't online activate it, very simple. Export the license key, input the key there and export it. Send it across to us or you can do this yourself. We'll, there is an online, uh, I can send you the web address. Hike Vision have an online portal where you can upload that license key. It'll generate one, you send it back, input import it and it will activate the license so either us hike vision or you can do it yourself and we can give you those details later okay and the control client if you ever want to download the control client to any user's pc the simplest way quickest way is log into the web browser of the the web client of the server and just navigate to control client download click select that and it will download the latest version that is applicable to this version here it's much more simpler than carrying usb sticks around and working out which version is which log in download it from there job done backup and restore system data so important so you can actually manually back up the data and there's a lot of stuff that you can actually manually back up now so if you need to migrate the server or just want to keep a backup for you know for maintenance and service purposes or for evidential purposes backup um, anything you want. The automatic backup is once a month, which day and what time and keeps free backup. So if you ever need to restore the system, um, you can simply do that from the server, but you can select it, do a manual backup, and then you can do select the restore, select the backup and import it. So it's really, really simple to do. An export configuration data, you can choose the data to export and then you export just that without the vast amount of other data and keep that um, into a separate USB or folder or separate location on another PC. Another little handy device is this upgrade device firmware. So from the front end web client, I can select the update device and then I can select the system server or local PC. So if I select my local PC, let me just get rid of that. It allows me to select the um, simultaneous upgrade. I could say five, select the file and then click next, select my devices. So if I've got 70 NVRs, 70 DVRs, whatever that is that's added to the system, I can do batch updates from the web client of the system. So as long as they're all the same, you're selecting the same firmware for the same units, it will go through and update them all automatically through this front end. Um, I've updated all mine, so there's nothing I can actually show you, but that's where you do it from the upgrade device firmware option here. So again, really, really powerful. So the web client is split into a couple of different sections, depending on your license. So whatever your license enabled will determine what you see, not only in the web client, but also the control client. So it stops this uh, miscommunication of a customer asking you, how does facial recognition work on their client when they don't even have that license or the appropriate camera connected? So the license will dictate what you see in the web and in the control client, okay? So under physical view, it's very simple. And again, if you've used IMS 4200 or 5200, the principle is exactly the same. It's as simple as this. This will show you 
what is on your local network or your server network and it'll scan it. This is on a separate um, network segment. So it will only show you devices that are on that, um, either the local network or the uh, server network, but it's on its own isolated network. What you'll see here is I've added all of my devices um, from the demonstration room already into the product. Um, you can only add as many cameras into the system as the license will dictate. So if you've got 264 channel NVRs, and they've got um, both fully populated, but you've already got 100 licenses, it will only allow you to add 100, so it will drop off the uh, ones that you don't have licensing for, therefore purchase more licenses. But you've still got the same um, functionality within this as you would within 4200, remote configuration, and it'll take you to the web page, very much like IMS 4200 does. Click on that and it'll open up the web uh, SDK interface. Um, so again, full management from the web client. If you want to add a device manually, it's as simple as clicking add device. You've got a few options here. So on with ISAP or the private, which way IP address, all of these different informations that you fill in, which is very general to the um, same sort of format as 4200, but there's more options within Hike Central because it's, it's a professional grade product. What you can do with this, if you have got an NVR and you don't want to add all of the channels for some reason, say you're adding a DVR, a 16 channel DVR, and you've only got eight cameras. Now, our system will assign, will import all 16 channels because it doesn't know that the camera isn't supposed to be in there. Not like an NVR, where if you've got a 64 channel NVR and you've only got 23 cameras connected, it will only import 23 cameras. So on a DVR, you can click on specify channel fill in the details, click specify camera, only select the eight cameras that are actually uh, enabled and live, or it may be only eight cameras you're bothered. You might not have two cameras locally on site that you don't want in the software. Select those and click add, and it will only import that. So therefore, it matches the license quantity that you want. So I'll just cancel that because I've actually added the devices in already. Um, access control device. So the encoding devices, NVR, DVR, encoder, uh, or an IP camera directly. Access control device is one of our access control product set. So this could be um, a facial recognition terminal, an IP facial recognition terminal. It could be the one, two or four door ACU. So the actual hardware um, access control unit and um, which I've got there, you can see that was already added. Um, it could be the mini face rec terminal. It could be an, uh, you know, one of the uh, fingerprint stations, IP stations. It could be a time and attendance terminal. So any of the access control product gets added in the access control device tab. So they're sort of segregated out to make it easier for you as the engineer um, to go through this as a logical process. Video intercom device, again, just ignore that. So when you go through it, as you click on menus, it'll prompt you with some certain uh, hints and tips for the first time you go into it on a new PC. What you will see is the video intercom device here. You can actually add um, your call stations and your indoor stations directly into the uh, software here. Again, it depends on what you're adding. The mod, you can buy the module which will allow um, two call stations and 10 indoor stations and then you have to add uh, individual licenses uh, past that. But we do do base license and additional licensing. So again, any query, just ask. This can be quite complicated because the, the video intercom can be set up very, very complicated. I plan to do a separate webinar just on the video intercom, actually, because there's a lot of detail that can be run through this. Um, just like IMS 4200, you could spend all day going through the video intercom, but you'll get a flavor for all of these separate things as we go through. The security control device is for the height vision um, security devices. We don't really sell those in the UK, but like in the Europe and, and outside of Europe, they are available and they would be added in um, within this section. Now docking station, I'm gonna do a webinar on the docking station next week. Um, the body camera docking station, really, really powerful device. Um, it's an eight bay unit, the docking camera sits in it. The Hike Central can be linked to a user in the docking station. So centrally from a HQ Point, it can pull all this information together from all your remote sites if you want it to, and that relates to individual docking cameras or, or users. Um, again, it's licensed, so each docking station requires a docking station license, but they're added in and assigned to a user through this um, menu here. We'll go through that next week if anybody wants 
to do that. And then we've got display screens. That's for the entrance exit parking, the AMPR terminal. Um, again, it's a licensed thing, but we can actually add the display screens in here. Recording servers is for additional recording. So our IPSAN units, but if you want centralized recording at the head office, we can add in our IPSAN units and, and, uh, and sort of push the record into that. There's no additional license to the NIPSAN unit, but if you use, if you want to use a server-based um, storage solution, then we do a P-Store license per camera, which allows you to use your already um, implemented server and storage um, solution that we can add in and sort of centralize the recording without using outlying DVRs, NVRs. What I would say with that is that's great if you want to do that. You have to have the bandwidth. If you put in a lot of remote sites in, you need that bandwidth. Um, and throughput for it. It's great for a backup solution, but not so great if it's the only solution. Because if that link goes down, you lose all live view and uh, recording because there's nothing locally on site. So just a little thing on that. Streaming servers, if you're doing multiple streams to multiple clients over the set value we do, we have to start implementing streaming servers. So it's a distributed video architecture, deep in mind servers, security order servers, and then smart wall is the decoder. This is where we add our decoder product in. Um, so we do a one for 10, 1, 4, 8, 10, 12, 16 channel decoder. You can, once you buy the license, you can add multiples of these in. So it's a one license um, module. You simply click add, fill the details in there. I've already got one added. And I, as you can see here, this was a single channel one. So it's a, a one HDMI on there, which is in the, runs the big demo room wall. Um, but again, I've got two smart walls I've set up in there, one for HDMI one and then one for VGA one. Uh, so you can actually, that's as simple as that, add it in, assign the HDMI and, and add your smart walls there. Very, very simple to do. The actual control of it is done through the smart client or the control client, which you'll see shortly. Logical view, just have a slurp of coffee while we're waiting for that to load. Logical view, so physical view is where you add all your devices. Again, very simple. Logical view is how the system is defined. So how this looks, and presented to the user. So most people, and then again, this is just a generalization, you can do what you like. Most people will add a DVR in and they will call it site one, an NVR call it site two, and they will, and that will be their logical layout because that is logical. But if you're in one building or one estate and you wanna have it on different like floor one, two, three, four, five, six, north, south, east, west, site one, two, whatever, you don't have to follow the physical view layout what you can do is when you add a device in um in the physical view by default it adds a, a group as the device name but you can click create new device name and then create a it could be floor one and then add the devices to it or you can come in here and then add areas as you want so i could click add area give it a name so the parent would be um if you leave none it'll go in at the top area name would be test and then click save. So we'll add a new one in there and I can simply add cameras in that haven't already been assigned. If they're already assigned in an area, the simplest way to do it is go in, select the cameras that you want to put in a new area, highlight them, click delete. And then when you go to your new area and click add, they will be available to be selected to actually go into the new area. A camera can only exist inside one area. So the, depending on how you want your system laid out, put a bit of thought into that. If you've got a complicated layout, the best way to do this is go into the areas and create those first. And then when you add your logical devices, you can actually select where they go on the add-in stage. It might make it a little bit easier if you do it at the front end rather than now. But again, it's entirely up to you what you do. Um, okay, so what you'll find that once we've added them in, um, I'll leave that in for now. You'll see these these are created by the device name because that's just logical for me. That's how I want to use it. But again, if I select the parent folder, it just brings everything through on the site. You can see on the right-hand side, I've used a, a Google map, a, a snapshot. So I've just imported a Google map. It's not a, a, a GIS map um, due to the cost of it. But it's very simple. You can click set GIS map and that will take you to a separate page, which I don't want to do it because it will remove this map. It'll take you to the API key. If you go into the system settings here and the map, uh, turn GIS map on and you can actually import the GIS API key that you get generated through Google. I'm going to leave that on off. Um, 
and then you can start drag dropping cameras, alarm inputs, radars, AMPR, whatever, any device that appears in this left hand side area tree, you can drag and drop into the map on the right hand side. They're multi layered maps, you can have hyperlinks, you can have multiple maps. So a map goes to a map goes to a map, so it goes through like a logical floor view, for instance. Um, and it's, it really is as simple as drag and drop. Um, you'll see it in the client. I've already set it up. Uh, and the alarm inputs and outputs, if, a, if you go into the, if you watch the map live in a control client and the alarm activates, the actual icons flash. It allows you to do output control. You can click on an image of a camera and it'll bring it up within the map. Um, similar to 4200. In fact, they did this and then implemented some of that back into 4200. Uh, very, very powerful. Not many people use the map. Uh, it should be used more than it is, in my opinion. Um, again, very simple with this as well. So if I click on a, say this, uh, face rack NVR here, I can click on it and click get camera name. That'll go through. Because if you change any of the OSD on the NVR, you need to update the software by doing that. And it will pull back through the information that you've updated. Or I can select this camera here, for instance. I can actually change the name of it. So I could just put uh, PTZ in there and click save. And I can select that and I can click apply camera name and that'll go through and push the name back to the NVR. So if you need to update any of the camera names, that will then push the OSD back to the NVR on site. So not only does it make sense here, it makes sense on the NVR on the site, but the customer will also see the text that relates to that. So again, it's a bi-directional operation now. But again, if, I, if you do click on a camera, I'll go back into the menu. Each camera has its own menu. You'll see you're able to set a lot of functions in here. So the main storage is on the encoding device, but you've got the hybrid the, the um, hybrid uh, storage areas, cloud storage, P-Store, cluster services, et cetera. Now, depending on the architecture and how the system's set up, it will depend on what license you need to get this to work. But it's very, very flexible and very, very powerful. But the main, when you add a device in, so a back-end device, NVR, DVR, the cameras will be related to that storage area, but you can actually do backup storage. So again, if you want to add um, back auxiliary storage, we call it enable that and point it to that um, location. Again, depending on your license, you can do real time storage, which could be a massive amount of uh, network traffic live or scheduled backup if you're using uh, if you want to do it when it's a lot quieter network traffic out of hours, for instance. So you just set those details up um, as applicable and ANR is the automatic refresh, uh, replenish. Picture storage settings. So if you've got an event, um, you set up an alarm or event and you want the picture to be saved on the local server, then you enable that and then select where you want it to be saved or again, one of those applicable storage uh, systems. And then you've got a lot of functions within here. So the facial comparison settings, if you're using it for facial recognition, again, you'll need the appropriate licenses, time and attendance, and then map settings. If I want to add this to a map, I enable add to map, click save. And then again, you can change the icons, the colors, you can add remarks to it. Very, very powerful. Click save. Yep, so that's fine. Uh, I just put test in there and that will actually appear on the uh, map if you do that. And then it's as simple as dragging cameras over and um, dropping them in place or face rack channels, alarm inputs, outputs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, you'll see the map already work in a minute. Then you've got doors. So if you use an ACU, you'll see the doors that come in here, radars, again, licensed alarm inputs and alarm outputs. So it's set out quite logically. Uh, I think it's quite easy to use. Um, again, hopefully you'll agree. What you'll also see at the top here, um, depending on, if I click on DVSHQ, the, the parent folder, you've actually got some functions along the top here. So if I close this map down, expand it, you've actually got some options along the top. So if I click edit on here, it allows me to add in some certain functionality that belongs to a parent or a group of, um, you know, th this particular one will belong to the whole site. But you've got resource groups, so you've got alarms, people analysis, heat analysis, pathway analysis, person feature, multi-door interlocking, anti-passback, and emergency operation. So these are ones that are set. So, for instance, the people analysis one is is one that could do. Um, occupancy counting so there's a in the client it'll if you use people counting cameras on the entrance and exits to these sites it will tell you how many people are in how many people are out 
Um, but also, if you need to do a fire um, report, you can actually from the client, as long as you, but th this is where you have to be very careful how you design the system because you have to have read in and read out access control for this to work accurately. Um, if you want to use like a fire roll call, read in and read out. Um, you can go into the client, look at the uh, occupancy section, click on report, and then it'll generate a who's in the building report. And as long as they are clocking in and clocking out and not tailgating or holding it, so you need anti-pass back, you need to have uh, read in and read out, because otherwise the mindset won't be there and you'll be sending fire people in for people for ghosts effectively that don't even exist. So we can do that. So th this is all set up through this um, end here, but it requires very strict um, adherence to how the system is deployed if you're using it for that kind of thing. But you've got things like heat analysis, so you can actually add in, um, you know, results that could be accumulated across multiple devices for a parent area. So again, quite powerful, and you'll see some of these functions later on within the client. So again, that's what that parent area does. It allows you to set these certain functions and incorporate multiple devices into these reports. Okay, so moving on, we've got the event and alarm. So again, it's uh, the cause and effect side of things. So you've got system monitored events, generic events, user-defined events and alarms. So most people use the system monitored event. The generic event is basically um, TCP or UDP commands that come in from third-party devices. So again, we have to enable that on the system uh, as a license, but it will enable us, if you know the TCP or UDP command set, you can actually listen for that on the network the event comes into our system and then it will allow you to uh, effectively run an event within our system based on a third party system. So that's where generic event is, but you need to know what that looks like from that third party vendor. System monitor event is the most popular one. And again, it's very uh, logical how you set it. It's as simple as this. I've already got some set up here, but if I wanted to set uh, one up for motion detection, for instance, click on add. It brings up a new interface and you select the source type from the left hand side. So which, whatever you're trying to the event, so whether it's a camera, a door, a radar, alarm input, AMPR, a person, parking lot, you can go all the way through these very, very um, in depth how you can set these events. And again, it's as simple as this. You select the camera, select the, the event that you want it to trigger on. So it could be, let's choose one I know is easy to do. So line crossing motion detection, for instance, and um, choose the device on the right hand side. So the encoding device or IP camera. So for instance, if I go to my IDS Act NVR and then go to this camera here, again, you need to make sure the motion is enabled on the device. That's why we put this little cog in there. So click on that. It will load the interface here of that end device. From here, we can just make sure motion is enabled. So if I go to event, basic event <sighs> always on a webinar huh oh, luckily it was quite quick um let's do that again go into here set the event should pop up with allow thing down here, but it's not going to because it's a webinar and it's not going to work. But basically, you set the motion detection on that device there, set it, click save, draw the area, and then that would allow that make sure that it's actually on. Another thing you have to make sure is notify surveillance center is ticked. That's how we notify our softwares. So just click notify surveillance center and click save, and then that will make sure the event is set on the end device. Um, once you've done that, so you selected the camera, selected that, active control. So if you select active control, it's reactivate. If you don't clear the alarm down in the security center, it will keep uh, reactivating. Um, but I'm going to turn that off. Actions is where you set what you want this to do within the system when we receive an alarm. It's very straightforward. So all day templates is armed all day, but you can set your appropriate schedule. And this applies to any of our events. This is just a simple motion detection one, but you can, you know, it's any, any of these would be uh, set in the same manner. So trigger recording. And I wanted to trigger recording storage in main storage, but again, or auxiliary storage, the source camera or a different camera, how long pre and post. Then you've got create tag. Do you want it to create a tag and where? Um, so it's easy to find on the search within the client. Capture the picture. Again, specified or source camera. 
link an access control point to it, link an alarm output to it, trigger a PTZ preset, send an email, and then trigger a user-defined event, which you can set up in here. So a, an event triggers a user-defined event, which can then trigger another event. So it's like sort of cross-linkage. Um, once you're happy, you've set that event up how you want it to react, just click Add. That'll go away through, set that up, and that'll be added into the list here. So this is saying it's configured. Again, you can test it, the configuration. So test event configuration, um, or you can actually trigger alarm there. So you know, from the front end, it's very simple to do. You go away and do all that. So again, if you're using whitelist and blacklist for AMPR or facial recognition, then these will be set up as events within this section here. Okay, so generic event we've been through, that's a third party uh, TCP UDP listening. User defined event is where you can actually give it a name and then you can trigger that event and use that event to trigger another event. And within the client, we can actually select user defined events. So it could be Dave, which then triggers another event within the system. So it's like a cross linkage between events. Um, quite powerful if you use it correctly. And then alarm, um, system, system event and alarm differ slightly. So if you add an alarm in the same process on setup. So again, you select camera, Select camera offline, for instance, select the camera and say, uh, I don't know, this one. And then you've got the, the description, enter the, in, the description, the instruction. So uh, please tell the installer. It gives a bit more information. Schedules, who the recipients are. So you can actually start limiting this down to who the recipients in the system are. You can see I could send it to all users or just myself or exclude myself. So again, uh, this gives a little bit more in depth um, sort of uh, build up to this. Same function. So you've got your related cameras, capture picture. You could pop up a related map. Um, so you can select the map within the area that pops up in the security control. Uh, you've got pop, trigger pop-up window, display on smart wall. So this could be now sent to a decoder. So you've got a nice big video wall um, dedicated a tile to it. Display on smart wall, yes. Then you say wall related to graphic card or decoding device. Then you have to say what tile it goes in. So it goes in the demo room smart wall that we set up earlier. And then you've got mainstream substream stop displayed alarm after 15 seconds or until replaced by an alarm of a higher priority. Restrict alarm handling time. So it has to be handled within a certain time and then trigger event if it's not. So trigger another event, trigger audible warning and trigger user defined event. So click add. So again, two different things, events. Oh, I haven't got a map. Let me just close that off. I did select that one. Okay. I thought I had pressed that. So you can see you can't actually go through it without making sure that the relevant things are handled and input correctly. So it stops you making mistakes. So again, events and alarms, they both achieve um, similar things, but then the, the alarm will allow you to build on that um, in more depth and allow it to interact with the user more, especially with the video wall and the recipients. So that's where you build up all your system cause and effects. Very, very simple. Um, under You can enable them and disable them. So if an alarm is a nuisance alarm or it's not relevant anymore, rather than delete it, you can enable or disable it. Uh, and an alarm settings, you can actually give it different alarm priorities. So we put three priorities in there, but you can add up to 255 and give it different colors. Uh, and you can also add in the alarm categories. So where, this might not be relevant to the customer. So you can actually change, add one in and say, uh, number five is uh, false alarm, don't worry, click save. And then again, that will allow you to select these different things when you're building these up um, that get represented. So again, when you go to clear the alarm down, I can now select false alarm, don't worry, as, a, as an alarm category. But you can search on all them after. It's just really what's applicable to the end user in the site at that time. Uh, access control, um, again, you need the appropriate equipment, our equipment currently. Um, as far as third party integration is something that we are working on to get third party integration with our system with other systems. Uh, I have a list which I'm not going to tell you right now. And um, there's a um, 
there's an engine effectively that will run on our system. Uh, again, it'll be licensed, but it'll allow us to integrate our product into third party vendors products that do uh, access control and that are widely used um, or other such um, like AMPR, video, etc. So these will start to come. So those of you that w wanted to know more, more about the integration possibilities, that's definitely coming. But again, the access level is as simple as adding one in, building it up that's appropriate to the site. So you like default 24 seven, but you could have nine to five, weekend only, whatever that is. You give it an access name, tell it what it is. So nine to five, not 15, there's no such thing. And then you could have, um, you know, select the appropriate devices, select the schedule that applies to that, click on add, and then that's an access level within the system. So again, that's really down to how the site requires you to build these access control levels up. No different to any access control system. Time and attendance, you have to have the module for this. And um, this is, again, quite complicated. You have to go through a lot of settings in here um, to get this to work. So it's a case of having the license. You can use a time and attendance dedicated terminal or our access control product. Either will work with it as long as you have the license. But again, you add in the general rules. So you have to add in rules when they're applicable. If you have overtime, what the attendance checkpoints are. So the check in and check out, um, put in the leave types, the shift schedules, the records and handling, attendance report. And then you can, you can calculate them, uh, send them automatically. You can pull in from third party databases into our system. You can manually correct it. Uh, this is quite an involved module, but very, very powerful. We have a couple of people that do use it. Um, I'd say you have to put a bit of groundwork into it, but it, it is powerful once you set it up and then you can do the reporting and so you can export a report or um, actually do the reporting uh, automatically. So it's sent to a system or, you know, an email automatically. Really, really powerful. Person, that's where we add people in, whether it's uh, a person is categorized as somebody who uses AMPR, uh, well, AMPR uh, intercom, because you can start linking all these together. Um, facial recognition for the cameras or the access control. So this is where you would add a person in. There's only myself and John Saunders. God bless him, he's um, on furlough, so he's dead at the moment to me. Um, as you can see, skeleton. But you can see two people in here. Um, you can add loads of different lists in here that's applicable to the application you're using. Simply click and add a list in. You can see it's as simple as adding that and you can relate it to a group, but it's as simple as adding a person and click on add, fill in those details. So first name, last name, gender, um, the ones with the red asterisks of the mandatory fields. And then you can take a picture from the device, take a picture from a webcam or a camera that's built into a laptop or upload a picture. If you're using it for facial recognition um, or facial recognition access control, then I would use the device to capture the picture because it's in the best profile that we use. Um, you can upload a picture, but you have to have the certain picture size. And again, if it's a Facebook picture, it's probably not going to give you the best results. So the device um, or a webcam um, is suggested for that. But again, then you, you'd assign them the facial recognition group, um, what the access levels are, if they're extended access super user, what a time and attendance group they belong to, if you're using it for time and attendance. PIN code is if they're using card and PIN. Card, if they're using uh, uh, MyFair card and not just their face, you have to go in, you need the USB card reader to start with, or you can use a, uh, one of the access control devices. You select that on there. You can have multiple cards per person. Fingerprint, if you're using a docking station, again, like I said, you can assign a person to a docking station, so the footage will be related to them, which then obviously gives it a nice um, audit trail. And then resident information is for the video intercom side. And again, you can build that up. It's very, it's as complicated or as simple as you want to make this in, in essence. So I've got a couple of people in, like you can see, if I click on me, you can see there's me that's taken from a face rack terminal and I filled in all of the applicable details. Um, again, you've got a face comparison group. So a face comparison group is the facial comparison that's based on NVR, D, uh, NVR and soon to be Turbo DVR. And there is a face rec Turbo DVR coming. Um, but this will be, so the way this works is you add a list in, so give it a name, similarity threshold, and give it a description. So we've added it in there. You import the people you want to reside within this list. If you do this list after, you can actually go and add people in, or you can do it at the beginning. So you can create the list and add the person, or create the whichever way you can do it, forward or backward. Once you've created this, uh, added the people into the appropriate um, channels, lists, 
you have to click apply to device. So what this will actually do there is send this list down to the device itself. So the face rec NVR will have a copy of our database from Hike Central on the local device, because if it lo loses communication, it will still operate locally. Um, so you have to click apply to the device. Um, so just a little side note, but again, it's quite simple to do and synchronize from the name names, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. You can make that as complicated as many lists as you want and as many people. Access control groups, again, we've already set that up and then you have the same thing. Once you've selected all your access control groups and made them up and applied the people to it, like we've, this is our office one, so all the people are in there, you have to click apply to device and you either do it now or you can set it, say scheduled and you'll do it out of hours. But you have to apply these to the devices. It will prompt you in the web client. When you do this, it'll say, do you want to apply it now? But you can actually do it manually there. Same with attendance group and dock station groups. So that's where you'd set up all of that relevant information that relates to facial recognition, uh, face comparison, access, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, adding the people in to the system that are fundamentally the, the, the people that are using the system for access control, et cetera. Okay, so moving on, what I will say is under the license, I was supposed to do this earlier, but I forgot. Under the license here, you'll see on the new license mechanism, for the AMPR camera, face rack and thermal camera reporting. So not just the thermal camera, only for the thermal camera reporting. So temperature detection reporting, you have to have the licenses for. So you click on configuration and you can click add and then add the appropriate face rack AMPR or thermal camera into this section first for those functions to work. If you don't do it there at the beginning, these functions don't work and they don't appear as a device that can be added in the facial recognition uh, groups, etc. So make sure you add that there. I was supposed to do that um, at the beginning, but I didn't. Um, so the person, and so you need that. Once you do that, they, they can be used as face rack, to, you know, as, as long as that back end device supports that functionality, of course. Um, then you've got the visitor module. So the visitor module is brand new. You can actually got the visitor list there. So it's a way of um, you add in visitors in. So it may be a visitor, so you can click on uh add a add a visitor so click on uh add a visitor parent group group name i don't know it could be warehouse visitors and then you can actually start adding people into these um lists like you know so it kind of it, it needs improvement what i say is it is it's okay but it needs improvement the way it works is um you can see I've got a, a, a sort of a visitor in there, click on visitor. Um, they've got access 24 seven, but you have to add visitors into this system, uh, give them an email address, who they're gonna go see, et cetera. But we've also added visitor registration. So we click on visit registration, it's as simple as this. Go, you add them as a person effectively, like you would in access control, and then you assign them what they're visiting as. What So you fill all that information, like click add, and then that will notify the, the, the person, if you add a person like me, who's part of the access control, it will say there's a person there. What I wanted to do is a, a little more, a little bit more in depth. So um, when you sign in, if you come in early and sign in using, let's say if it's a QR code and you sign into a, a terminal, it will then notify the users and all sorts. And then you can sign them in, sign them out, et cetera. So a little bit more work, but it is, it's a good start. It's better than nothing that we had previous to this. Uh, vehicles. This is where you add your vehicle parking lots. So again, if you have a AMPR camera license, but not the entrance and en entrance and exit module, so you can just add the AMPR camera licenses, which allow you to do whitelist, blacklist control, so barrier control, and just do AMPR vehicle searches. We've actually got the entrance and exit barrier, the entrance and exit license, which adds in our parking lots. So like on 5200 parking, it's a very similar process to that. So we've got your entry and exit rules of what you do, basically, if a car's in a list, do you let them through automatically? Or if it's not in the list, don't let them in automatically. That's basically what it does. The parking lot is where you add your parking lot. So you can see that I've got three AMPR cameras. You can click on one to edit it and it'll show you, is it an entrance or an exit camera? So if it's a parking control you're using it for, camera for entrance, camera for exit. So two cameras, don't use the same camera uh, for the same thing. So you should use, you know, dedicated cameras. So you give it, if it's an entrance, it's an exit, what camera that is. And you can actually assign access control and video intercom devices within this. So you can actually say, well, if you click on it, I tell you, select a type of device which supports video intercom 
and an open barrier by swiping card. So you can start integrating and sort of linking these together now. So I, on this one, I said that that's the AMPR camera. So if it reads my number plate, it can let me in or the facial recognition terminal, if it recognizes my face or the card, then that can let me in. So they're all sort of linked together now and you can do the video intercom or access control device and then what they are and what controls the barriers at the capture unit or the video intercom access control device. So it's starting to give this real deep integration now. What it also does, it allows you to add multiple parking locks. So I can add another one in, click test. Seeing it working is more powerful than this. Click add, you fill your devices in there, you know, the appropriate devices, and then you can add your specific vehicles in here. So you can add multiple lists. So I've got blacklist or DVS HQ, but you can add visitor, star cleaner, whatever that might be, add a plate in, fill in the details there. Again, when it starts and ends, you don't have to fill color, brand, et cetera in, but it, you know, you can if you want. And then and assign it from a person list. So if that, that person is already in the access control list, you're going to assign them then to the vehicle. And then it's as simple as under the parking lot. I'll click edit on this one. But you give it a capacity. So if it's got a capacity, just, we haven't got that many spaces, but you know, you could give it a capacity, how many free spaces, what the parking duration is, and then the expiration prompt date. So you can start giving these sort of details in. This is gonna uh, evolve rapidly. So we took taken the, ba the basic functionality from 50 to 100 parking, and this will, I've already given a lot of feedback around this. This will sort of hopefully gain a lot of traction and move forward with it. It does support the signs, there's two signs. So if you want the LED matrix signs to say, uh, welcome shows your number plate that you know you're, you're actively being monitored it could say welcome Dave it could just have some information on there we support the height vision uh, AMPR LED matrix sign we also support the UK based LED synergy sign so both of those are supported within this module and um, the LED synergy one's got loads of different varieties and they got different sizes different colors etc so again you've got the choice of whether it's the height vision or the LED synergy one and you would add that within this environment here to display that Again, so if you've got, if you go into here, you add it in and you've got the display screens there that where you added it in, in the, uh, the beginning section with the, that's where you would add that in network based screen. Okay, so under there we've got security. So this is the roles, users and security settings. So this is basically where you add roles in. So the easiest way is add all your roles. So security, operator, cleaner, I don't know, staff, admin. Then you add users in and assign them to a role because it's much easier to do that. Then it'll tell you who's online and who isn't online. You can activate and force everyone to log out, synchronize from an AD. So we support um, uh, Active Directory. So you can import all the users in there if you want to use Active Directory. Um, and, or you can click on somebody like Andy Waters, make him inactive, give him a different role, add a new role, and et cetera, et cetera. So again, very standard to any VMS. And the security settings, you can lock the IP addresses, enforce minimum password age, and then lock client automatically after 30 minutes. So after 30 minutes, all the clients of inactivity you will lock. Then you've got system settings. So there's basically a lot of settings that are specific to the site. So the map, user preference, server thresholds, network, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you can go through this at your own will and set these up. Uh, as required, they'll be more site specific. They're set for general, but you can sort of tweak it for your own application. And then you've got access control tests. So if you're using access control, this is brand new in 1.6. If you're using access control systems and want to test the configuration, you can actually now do access control testing uh, from this front end to test that con certain configurations will work, and then you can go in to deploy them. So again, a little nice test tool built into the web client. That's sort of it for the web client. Again, we've spent an hour on that. So I'm going to go through quickly through the uh, control client. So the control client, we'll open that up now. Those of you that haven't seen it, it looks like this. Version 1.5 updated it and version 1.6 is very similar. So if I just make that full screen, what you can see here is it's uh, anything that is applicable to the license is, is shown in this screen. But again, if I don't want something shown on the screen here, so it's too messy, it's too, too much on here, too noisy, I can sort of drag them off to the left, the right hand side and just start getting rid of them. Or I can drag one back in. So it's like drag and drop to make the icons up as you like. Um, the first thing is the monitoring and I'll try and go for this It's quite simple to be honest. You've got on the left hand side, you've got the, the monitoring. So these are all the devices that we've got added in. So if I take 
for instance, this uh, NVR here, double click on it and it'll load all of the views within this client quite simply like this. And then you've got your events. So you've got an event view there and you've got all events, face comparison, access control or vehicle record, and then subscribe to all of them. So you can make up the view as you want. Uh, and then you can fold that as well, which makes it even bigger. You can pop it out. It supports four extended screens. So like IMS 4200, it's up to four extended desktops. So you can drag them off over four uh, different screens. Again, double click on a camera. It's raining here in the UK. But again, it makes it changes it between uh, mainstream and substream. Um, that's pretty straightforward. You've got your face comparison. And then you can say you've got different views. So you've got, so if I click on this one here, so I've set a view up um, and uh, public view of AMPR face rack or a, a different NVR. So you've got public view and private view. Public view, if you set a view that's public, anyone who logs into the software will see that. If you set a view that's private view, only the user that set it will see that view. Okay. So it's again, it's how you set that up. We've got live view and playback done on the same toggle, uh, on the same uh, bar now. So it used to be on the left-hand side, but you can simply click on playback and then you can play back by view or you can go and play back by logical resource and select any camera that you want up to 16 cameras. That'll depend on the, the resolution frame rate, uh, encoding algorithms, PC performance, network performance, etc. But same standard um, controls that you, you, that you can do on the web browser, local GUI, IMS 4200, that hasn't really changed. So I'm going to dwell on that. Again, you've got some batch controls up here. So if I move up here, if you see red dots in there, synchronize now, click that and it'll update. So if you make changes in the web client, it'll ask the, cl the, cl the client user to update it. Major changes will force the logout. Download center is where all of your downloaded footage from the playback will go and alarms. Is any uh, outstanding alarms, performance, etc. You've got batch wiper control. So I could say start wiper on a camera. So if I got a camera, they say, uh, let's see now, let's put one in the is. So the X and let's put that one in there. Highlight that and click start wiper on all of them. But I could say this one here, click then click okay. And then you'll see the wiper go. So wiper controls, you've got operate all access points. So you could open all the doors from the client. So you could run a command now that opens all the doors because it could be fire. Really, they should be linked to a fire alarm, but you could have an emergency like that isn't a fire alarm. Do you need to open all doors? So you could do that. Um, you've got trigger event. So again, your user defined events, which will trigger another event. From the phone, you configure your system layout, et cetera, expand. It's display on smart wall. So if I have the graphic card um, enabled, so the graphic card display port, click on display port one. That will now go to smart wall one, just the graphic card. Uh, not as you see there, it'll come up on here. I'll exit that anyway, but then that's the graphic card smart wall, and then you can start having alarms and stuff coming through to it. But again, it's really powerful, so you can set your views here. Each camera's got its snapshot, print, playback, audio, zoom. You've got, um, you know, PDZ control, D warp, you know, stream status, display on smart wall, alarms, audio, and visual tracking. One thing that is a nice little function is the visual tracking. So within the web browser function itself and the logical view, you can select the camera. Let me just kill the live view on this. Say so pick a camera here, wait for it to catch up. You'll see now there's a visual tracking um, button. If I click on that, I can start dragging cameras into this field of view. And basically what happens here is this. So if I go to visual tracking, let's find a camera that has this on. So if I choose the false alarm NVR, this one here, I should have set that up. There's a little footprint uh, pair of feet there for visual tracking. Click on that and that will link the camera. So you get to see that's the camera that I enabled visual tracking on. And these are the two overview cameras. So one's looking at my compound car park at the gate and one zoomed in on it. So now I get to see a visual overview of cameras that are linked to cameras. So for an operator perspective, if you've got like a, a wide area management, you need to sort of monitor closely because something's kicked off. That's a really nice way of doing it. And again, if you click on a certain camera, it'll just change that. Um, or you can click on eggs and it goes back to the original view.
So again, really nice. And you've got to locate our map as well. So if you want to go to the map and it'll take open up the map and go to that. So that's pretty straightforward, really powerful, quite nice and in, intuitive app to use. Again, if I stop this now and go to face comparison, so I've got a view already set up. So if I just load this view. So if I go and stand in front of this uh, camera over there, you'll see on the left hand side, face comparison working. Again, so I'm, I'm already enrolled as a person on the facial recognition. It's recognized me there. And again, they're my database ones. So I can click on live view details or click search. If I click on details, it tells me time activation, captured shot and original shot. Oh, God, they look mean there, don't they? Um, and then I can actually click on search, search captured picture, search archive or identity verification. So search captured picture. That'll open up another interface and go and search that camera. Um, I can't search that camera, that's mental. I have to go and search um, an actual, uh, and not the camera directly, but an NVR, for instance. Uh, so let's go for, and face rack NVR. Do that, click close, click search. So there you go. So that's me across all of the cameras I've added in the support facial recognition. So from that image here, again, I'm able to load that and you've got live view picture and you can export this, you can search it. Again, you can import a picture. So back on the page I just was on, if I close that down, I can actually import a picture that's separate to this. So if I wanna upload a picture, person search, I can actually upload a picture. If you're using facial rec NVRs, upload a picture and search for that person across my estate and they may not they may not be in my person database currently but it'll still do that as long as you're using the correct uh, technology so not only am i searching for all technology the, the cam the pictures that i'm already in it's third party search as well you've got archive search identity verification alarm search event search vehicle search uh, vca search is a good one so again under vca search it allows you to search for videos if i choose a false alarm on here and choose this 180 bullet camera. You can actually on the image here, select line crossing like this. Let's do it again. Line crossing like this, click search. And again, if that, there's nothing there, but if it's, if that line crossing, I disabled it, I believe yesterday. If there was uh, footage there, let's see if we can do it for the last seven days. But that would effectively, I put motion detection on here yesterday. So line crossing has to be enabled. The VCA has to be enabled on the back end device. So you don't have to have a line or a box drawn. You just have to have um, the VCA intrusion or line crossing enabled. You don't have to draw a box. If that's enabled, I've actually turned it off because it's a false alarm NVR, but line crossing or intrusion would do the same as motion there. So you can actually use it to search footage. So really straightforward. Search for events directly. So again, add stuff in. The one I wanted to show you is vehicle search. Again, using the correct technology, uh, I can search for my number plate here. Search on all cameras. Search for my license plate, LN68LXD, and I can say uh, when, let's go for the last seven days, click search, there you go. <laughs> Brilliant. Uh, let's just take that out then. Ah, oh, I know why it is. It's because I got entrance and exit mode now. So I've had, so the one thing, if you're using it as an entrance exit and not AMPR, you have to search as an entrance and exit. Um, so there's a little quirk in it. So again, that'll show me all of my vehicles there. And if I want to narrow it down, LN68LXD, click search, then it'll go and find all of the ones and then click on that. And then that's me coming in. And again, download, export, whatever. 
So pretty straightforward, uh, really powerful search functionalities within the software. Let me just close this down. And again, all of the events will be shown within the client. Let's get rid of that. Let's stop this. And what I will do now is show you the entrance and exit, because this is one of the most exciting ones. So the entrance and exit, again, if you've got uh, different ones, you select them from there. So you can either select live view, so it's constantly pulling video, or just leave it as the last captured image that comes through will be displayed on here. And then you've got the vehicle record. All of the vehicles that come through will be noted on here. And again, I can click on one. So and click on this one here, for instance. Oh, sorry, click on that one even. And it'll show you the video. So it'll tell you all of the details, what it is. It'll even try and show you what the brand is. If you support like the IDS TCM camera, which that is, it tries to give you the details of the camera. Again, hover over it and it'll show you the number plates, like a magnifying glass. That's really cool. And then you can actually export the footage and image, etc. cetera. Or from here, click the video and it'll load the video of it passing. Um, barrier control, you can do the barrier directly open, close or remain locked or open from here. So again, this is for the whitelist, blacklist control, really, really um, powerful. Again, during this climate, there's not much traffic that's going to come down this road currently. You can see nothing really coming, so I'm not able to show you that capturing live. So this is just sort of the last ones that have been captured. But again, if I leave it on this, it will show you the last displayed one. And again, I can click on search. For this one, if I wanted to look for this vehicle here, click search and it'll go and find any that relate to this vehicle. Um, it could be last seven days. It might only be in once. Click search and there we go. And then it'll show you that. So again, same with the face rack. It does the same with an AMPR. Uh, face search, again, we've already been through that. I'm just trying to think of anything else. Door and elevator control, you need specific uh, devices for. Entrance, uh, entrance and exit, we've been through. Alarm center, that's where all your active alarms will come through and you can be dealt with. So they'll come through stacked in here. Any related video and picture and map will be come, come through here. You can turn alarms on and off. So active arming control. So if there's a nuisance alarm, you can actually disable it from here and then display it, send it to a um, smart wall, et cetera. Video search business, these are all, we've all done this. Vehicle analysis, so the vehicle analysis, um, this is for like traffic flow. So if you look at AMPR, select that, select the uh, weekly report, click go, and it shows you your traffic flow through your site. So again, you can have it bar graph if you want, enter, enter and exit. So again, you can add that to dashboard um, as a report that keeps updated so you get to see traffic flow statistics. So again, quite powerful. Temperature analysis, that requires a license and a thermal camera with temperature in it. But again, select the camera, select that, click a weekly report, click generate report, and then that shows you temperatures that is detected uh, through of that camera. And again, you can add that as a, an active report. The actual dashboard here is where these reports reside. So click on dashboard and it will show you, I've all, like this is a, a one I've already added, so a people counting one, but you can actually click refresh and it'll go and refresh it, or you can actually select auto refresh on the report and it will always keep updating it. But you've got reports that include people counting, queue analysis, heat analysis. So people counting, you need uh, the appropriate camera for. So again, select the camera or cameras, uh, up to eight can be done. Select the report and it'll show you um, the appropriate, you know, uh, results for that camera or comparison of cameras. Q analysis, you need the Q detection camera, you need a seven line camera. Now, it used to be a dedicated camera, which is a seven line camera with the latest firmware will allow you to do face capture um, or Q analysis or behavior analysis. So again, selecting that camera, selecting the regions, select generate report, go. A weekly one. There you go. So there's different reports as the Q length, uh, Q weight, and then obviously people counting. So again, you can add that to the dashboard and you can change it to weight and duration or Q length. And you've got your different regions there. Really powerful heat analysis, fisheye. So if you've got a fisheye with heat analysis, you add those in there, like I have here. Weekly report, click generate report. Click on the fisheye there and it will load the, the fisheye uh, analysis and you can do it in like so different things. 
uh, people amount, you've got people amount uh, and dwell time. Again, depends on the uh, firmware. You need the latest firmware for this to happen on the 12 megapixel fisheye. And again, export adds a report. So really, really powerful reporting tools within this uh, sort of uh, client environment. And again, you've got sort of download center. The download center is really simple to use. When you've selected a bit of uh, uh, video to download and the download center there, it will actually stack up. It'll show you the progress, uploading, and then the ones that are done there. So really nice. And then you've got local pictures, recording system, etc. So it's quite easy to do two-way audio, video intercom. So the video intercom allow you to talk to the video intercoms that you've added in. And again, you need to add them in. You need the licenses. And then, then it, you can also ring this as a center. What else is a smart wall? Again, simple as this. Most people pop this out. Where's the smart wall gone? There it is. Smart wall, most people will pop this out. So again, you select the smart wall and then you select the cameras. You can have a view. So if I have a view there, you can send a view to it and it'll send the view. PTZ control even. So if there's a camera PTZ, you've still got that full use for the, um, you know, through the video wall client there. But that's effectively where you drag and drop cameras, change the display layout, then lock it, etc. So again, pop out smart wall for use with decoders. I think that's about it, to be honest. That's, and then the only other one is the health monitoring, which is down here. The health monitoring gives you an overview of the system completely. So green is good, red is bad. Now, there's devices I've added in which aren't configured properly or I've deleted and not deleted the, um, the linkages, so it shows as errors. But it allows you to go in here quite thoroughly, go in, select one of the submenus down there, and it'll give you the status of everything and it refreshes every three minutes so you can see what's online what's recording what the status of the doors are what the status of the access control docking station server logs so you can pull off all the device server resource logs and put it all off there so it really is an intuitive way of finding out the health of the system completely for any device that we connect to the system can be monitored and reported on all through the client app Again, if you want to use, there's a, there's a smartphone called, oh, you can't even see it. Now you can see it. Ta -da! I'm like a magician. Uh, Hike Central on the mobile will give you live view playback export. It'll allow you to upload people through the app so you can actually take a picture of a person. Um, or if you've got a picture of a person on the phone, add that person to the facial recognition database from the client app which on the phone, which is really powerful. Other than that, I hope I've given you an overview in the sort of 75 minutes that we've been doing this. Again, there is a lot more to this, but I wanted to capture the general gist of the system, uh, give you sort of an overview, which I think I've done, or at least I hope I've done. Um, there is one question on here, which I'll just look at now. It says, sorry, I may have missed you saying this, but can you clarify what you can do for free with Hike Central and what you need to pay for? The, 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 essentially nothing for free. Everything is a license. If you download the free version, um, it allows you to have eight cameras connected and some basic functionality just for testing. It's not something that you deploy to a customer. It's more to get a feel for it, maybe for training purposes or to see if the software is powerful for you, uh, you know, good enough for what you want to use. It, everything is linked to a licensed um, module. So if you want to test something, then contact Hype Vision uh, and ask for demo licenses, which they will provide based on the project. Okay, so nothing is available. So that's from Chris McLean. Nothing, re nothing is for free really in this. You need a license for everything. Okay, because it is our licensed product. IMS forty two hundred can do some of this, but it's not licensed. And again, server client architecture. This is um, a Windows only client software as well. So we don't have a Linux or a Mac version currently. I know they are looking at it, but this is a Windows based client as well, just for those that um, may be wondering. And in the system, again, you can uh, set up whether you have a joystick and what those shortcuts are, saving locations, image, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Hopefully that's answered a lot of questions you may have had or given you an insight into how the software works, what it looks like and how powerful it can really be. Anything past that, please drop us a line, webinar dvs.co.uk or ask Hype Vision. Um, again, wherever you are in the world, stay safe. Uh, appreciate your time uh, watching these. Any feedback, please welcome it. Any suggestions, stay safe, stay tuned, stay subscribed and we'll see you next week or definitely next week for more webinars and how-to content. Cheers, guys. Stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye.